Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. As the Right to Information Act marks its first anniversary, how effectively is it functioning? That's the key issue I shall raise today in an exclusive interview with the Chief Information Commissioner, Wajahat Habibullah. Mr. Habibullah, let's start with the way you approach your office. The preamble to the RTI Act says that one of its aims is to promote transparency and accountability. Yet your critics say that in the last one year, far from being a champion of openness, You've often behaved like someone who protects the government's secrets. Well, that could be a matter of opinion. Uh, it, it's not up to me to either protect or compromise the government's secrets. My mandate is to work only according to the Act itself. So far, the Commission is concerned. Uh, it's not one of the objectives of the Act to be transparent and accountable, bring transparency and accountability. It is the objective of the Act to bring about transparency and accountability. And that, in fact, is our entire effort to see that transparency and accountability is there. And so far as the Commission is concerned, the reasons why we take decisions, and so, uh, all our decisions are on the website. Let, let's pause there a moment. You made a very important point that, in fact, the objective is to promote transparency and accountability. With that in mind, let's explore why your critics think that you behave more like a protector of government secrets than a champion of openness. For instance, in July, when the government announced that it wanted to amend the RTI Act specifically to bar file, file notings from being made public, one or two of your commissioners criticized the government decision, but you were completely silent. And many people said, that your silence was tantamount to supporting what the government was trying to do. My mandate is to implement the Act as it is. It is not for me, therefore, to start commenting on the contents of the Act. What is the Act like or what is it not like? I do know that as the, as the Act is at present, it talks about transparency and accountability. That is the objective of the Act. Absolutely. And that is why your fellow Commissioner O.P. Kejriwal said on the 17th of August, it is a fact that if you take away file notings from the definition of information, it would substantially, very substantially, weaken the Act. There's no doubt about it. You didn't even make that sort of comment. In other words, you behaved so strictly neutrally that most people believed he's not championing the Act, he's not championing transparency or openness, he's actually quietly permitting the government to undermine the Act because that's what his silence amounts to. Well, I don't know if you can really accuse me of that. Of course, so far as Mr. K. J. Wal is concerned, he is most welcome to his opinion and he can express it. And as I said, we're talking in terms of transparency and accountability. But those amendments, as you probably know, were proposed without consulting the Commission. And to that, we had taken uh, take an objection and we have been in touch with the Absolutely. government Absolutely. You took objection to not being consulted. What you didn't take objection to was what the impact of those amendments would be on the Act and on transparency if those were passed. Because, you see, I felt this was really an issue between civil society and government, different organs of civil society. I see myself as arbiter. I cannot take sides. Well, if you see yourself as arbiter, then why did you not at least comment when the government came up with an extremely contradictory and confusing clarification, it claimed that in fact file notings were barred and that its amendment, if it was passed, would make them open and accessible in a limited form, which you know is the exact opposite of the truth. Yet even at that point, when you could have stepped in and said that the government is talking rubbish, you didn't. And by not doing so, you allowed the government to get away with the confusion it was deliberately creating. I don't think that that is correct. Get away. What do you mean by get away with that? Not get the caught amendment, out. The amendment never came before. No, not get caught out. The matter was really taken up, discussed in public. I have, of course, myself said in public, uh, you know, I, 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 as I said I, at that point also, I don't want to enter into public debate on the issue, but I have said in public and on the NDTV also that there was, there seemed to be a lack of understanding within government about what was excluded under the Act and what was not excluded under the but Act. But you said it so sotto voce, you said it with such understanding that people didn't think you were being critical, leave aside admonishing the government. What you should have done was to say, I am the one who interprets the Act. This is the interpretation of the Act that applies as of today. The the government's claim that in fact file notings are barred is erroneous and wrong and I wish the government to stand corrected. You could have done it, forcefully you didn't. My dear boy, that is what we have been ruling in all our judgments. Our decisions are completely in the public eye. They are on the website. They can be seen by anybody. And if you wish to access what we've said on uh, file notings, you just have to go onto our website. All right, let's take up some of your decisions, because if you say that in your decisions you're actually strong in enforcing the spirit of the Act, then let me point out that in August, 
when the government in fact appealed to the Delhi High Court to prevent you having access to the Narayanan letters so that you as information commissioners could decide whether they should be made public or not, which was completely your right to do under the Act. You didn't complain. You didn't object to the government going to the court. You quietly accepted it and once again your silence was deemed acquiescence. Again, now we are party in that particular case. We are going to appeal that. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are going, going to, to, but you haven't. No, because the date is 21st of January. The next date of so January is 21st of January. You are prepared to wait five months before you respond. Well, a date has been fixed on that date. It is the High Court which has fixed that date. And therefore, there is a legal proceeding. We are subject to legal proceedings. I don't wish to become. I would, I would have been happy to be an activist, but I am not an activist. As I mentioned to you, I am in a particular position. They have, they have, they have challenged an, an, a decision of the Commission on legal grounds. It is for us to contest those on legal grounds, not on the street. But people say that you are contesting so slowly, you are letting the government get away with it. What effectively happened is that instead of the Information Commission deciding what can be made public and what can't, the government's taken the decision by going to the High Court. It's stolen, in a sense, your powers and your authority, no. and you're not responding with alacrity. No, it's not correct. How have they stolen it? They have to approach the court. We believe that our decision was correct. Under Section 18, we are entitled to see any document that we ask for. And that is all that we had asked for in this case. But we you didn't get to see it, and you didn't protest about it. You so may be going to court no, in due no, course, no, no, that's no, another no, matter, no, no, but no. you could have raised your voice in protest, no, and you didn't. Your voice doesn't matter. Raise my pen is what matters. And in this matter, we are going to contest this case in the High Court. All right, then let's look at how you raise your pen, to use your own colorful phrase. I mentioned earlier an instance where the government had, as I called it, stolen your authority. Let me give you an instance where you virtually gifted your authority away to the government in what's called the Vishash Uppal case. Vishesh Uppal. Vishesh Uppal case, which you yourself adjudicated as Chief Information Commissioner. A request for access to files to determine how information commissioners you included had been appointed was refused by the government. Rather than in appeal, interpreting the terms of the Act yourself, you chose to give the authority to do so to the Prime Minister's office. So you've not only passed the buck there, you've passed your own authority and your right to decide to the PMO instead. Uh, no, I mean, you could argue that. But this particular case is interesting because this particular case concerns the Commission itself. Uh, All the I more reason for you to be clear cut and open and decide so we, have, we, we have been, I mean, if you read the decision in, 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 in clear terms, we have held that Section 8.2, which, gives, uh, which, which, uh, which uh, brings in the Official Secrets Act, has to be read together with the rest of Section A and has to be read together with the overriding clause. I can see, because I've read your decision and you pointed out in your decision that in fact under Section 22 of your Act, the Official Secrets Act doesn't apply. But then, the concluding operative part of your decision says the Prime Minister's office will examine the matter and may disclose the information to the appellant, which also suggests that if it chooses not to, it may not. But and under, you add, under all you 8, add is the public authority shall take an appropriate reasoned decision. No, no, but the point is that how I have said that is on the basis of what has been argued earlier. May allow or not allow, on what basis? On the basis of Section 8.1. On that basis they may decide. But this was the decision for you to take. You are the person who interprets under the Act what is permissible for disclosure or not. You haven't done it. You passed your authority. But my the dear PMO. boy, this is a rather special case because it concerns the Commission so itself. So, so if we give it or if we don't give it, there is a conflict of interest there. But there's or a very minor conflict well, of you interest. Well, you may consider, you may consider it minor. The public interest in proving that the Information Commission works effectively and works openly was greater than the conflict of interest. I don't know, because in this particular case, since it's a concern, the Information Commission, I deemed that there would be a conflict of interest. Therefore, I have remanded the case. But please understand, it is only a remand. It, it, it can come back to us. It has to come back to us, because we've set a time limit of 15 and days. And if it comes back to you, at the end of that time limit of 15 days, will you take a clear-cut decision, an unequivocal one, rather well, than partial one? We will have to take a decision on that basis. If the, if the matter is not to the satisfaction of both parties, if they have taken a decision of a particular kind and quoted a particular clause of the Act, we will have to judge whether that clause is applicable or not. Let me point out the underlying concern that lies under all the examples that I've discussed with you just now. People say that the Chief Information Commissioner and his colleagues are in fact the champions of the RTI Act. Tens of millions of Indians look upon you to defend the act. But when it's being threatened by government opposition, by threats to amend it, rather than stand up, you become technical, timid and quiet. I don't know if I, I would agree with you in that regard. It is under attack. I don't think it is under attack. Why? 
because this act really is an act for all of us, for all Indian citizens. Can, I interrupt, you? Can I interrupt you? It's not just under attack from the government who want to amend it. It's even under attack from the Supreme Court, which has been suggested in the Times of India, wants to amend it to give powers not to disclose to the Chief Justice as he deems fit, and more importantly, to replace the Information Commission as the appellate authority by the Supreme Court itself. Now that, if it comes to pass, would drive a coach and horses through the spirit of the act. Yet, once again, you're silent. But my dear boy, the question is that this is part of the whole monitoring mechanism. At the end of the year, we ask for a report from every ministry. The Supreme Court has given its comments. It has given its recommendations. It is for us, we will of course include the recommendations in the annual report, but it is for us to say that whether these recommendations should be accepted, should not be accepted, What's whether they are recommended to that or not. Question? Just to narrow in on the Supreme Court recommendations, should they be accepted in your view or should they be rejected? Well, I can't, re I can't give you a knee-jerk reaction. These are all these processes, these, these things are under examination. A month and more to consider no, it. The, the, the things are just coming in. All those are just coming in. All the all all the uh, all the all the uh, responses from the various ministries are just coming in. Once they've all come in, we should take a view in the matter before we present the case to Parliament. Now you see that this can, can I, can I talk no, 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 you can't because uh, <laughs> sorry, but the point is that you know, allow me to finish. The point is this will all have to be examined at present. We don't start processing now. You have said this and now you have said that. We stop that but case. But I tell you when what the, the matter comes in. You when, see, no, no, you think no, you have time no, to process, no, no. but the public is getting concerned, NGOs are getting worried. They are pointing out that rather than stand up for openness, Wajahat Habibullah and his commissioners are buckling under pressure, be it from the government, be it from the Supreme Court, or be it from the PMO. But please, Karan, then through you, I wish to reassure the people that these, are, oh, these matters are all under process. You don't buck the, the process. What you Can do is quick follow question? the process. Is the act and the spirit of openness and transparency safe in your hands? Well, I'd hope so. <laughs> Are you giving I, an assurance to I'd the people like of to. India? Are you giving an assurance to the people of India that Wajahat Habibullah will defend the Right to Information Act and not allow it to be transgressed? It's not a question of Wajahat Habibullah alone. It's a question of the entire system. And basic to the system is not Wajahat Habibullah. Basic, Wajahat Habibullah is simply a cog in the wheel. Basic to the system is the citizenry. Will you defend the citizenry right to open information? Certainly. All right, let's take Whenever the citizenry point. turns to me, we should, certainly, we should certainly see to it that they get whatever rights they are guaranteed under this Act. Let's take a break and see exactly how much of that commitment has been fulfilled by the Commission in the way it's handled appeals during the last one year. We'll be back in a moment's time for the second half of this exclusive interview. Stick with us. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and an exclusive interview with the Chief Information Commissioner, Wajahat Habibullah. Mr. Habibullah, let's turn to the manner in which your commission has handled appeals. NGOs point out that of the 1,531 appeals that you've heard so far, 731, that's almost 50%, have been handled and dispensed with by your staff and not by your commissioners. How do you account for that? No, no, I think that they, so far as the appeals are concerned, they're all handled by the commissioners, appeals and complaints. Can I correct you? People closely connected with Arvind Kejriwal's Parivartan have told us that in several instances they filed appeals and they've got back letters dispensing them, signed by L. C. Singhi, a joint secretary in your commission, Additional and Manesh registrar. Kumar, who is in fact a former under secretary. Neither of them are commissioners, and yet they disposed of the matter and dismissed it. Again, may I correct you? The point is they have conveyed the decision of the commissioner. They have not disposed of it. They have not disposed so of the appeal So the impression that in fact work has been delegated to the staff and it's a clear impression that Parivartan has is a wrong impression. Entirely. It's in fact an unfair impression. Entirely. Alright. Let's come to the 800 cases listed on your website which you have handled so far. Of these, an astonishing 321, that's 40 percent, were in fact handled without either side being heard. NGOs say that this is a breach of natural justice. Ah, good. Because when I had a public hearing, Parivartan had in fact an organized on the public 24th of September. hearing. On, and I'd gone and this very question was put to me. Now there can be three categories. There will be one category in which a hearing is held. And when the hearing is held, both parties have to be heard. When a hearing is held, then both parties have to, be, uh, have, to be, have to be called for the hearing or given a chance to the appear for the hearing. The second category is when a hearing is not necessarily held, but the parties, both parties, the opinions of both parties are taken. They've, they've been given a chance to be heard and the without third, a formal hearing. Well, that chance isn't ah. given at all. No, and third, that's what we're talking about. A third, a third, a third, a third category, no, you're not talking about. The point of the third category is where the law is very clear and the question raised is only on points of law. But even there, the High Court and the Supreme Court 
would have required the appellant to come and be heard. If the Supreme Court and the High Court chose to dispense with appeals without hearing the appellant, it would be called miscarriage of justice. Surely, no. that applies in your case. You're a quasi, quasi judicial we're body. Quasi -judicial. We're quasi judiciary. We're quasi judiciary. We're not. We're, we're not. Doesn't mean you can take court. shortcuts. No, no, you're not taking shortcuts. For example, I'll give you an example. Not in this country, but in the UK, they'd never hold hearings. They hardly ever, out of all the cases. There's no reason for us to follow the worst no, practices I, I agree, of the no, rest no, of the I, world. I agree. I agree. That, and that is why we are holding hearings. But normally, the understanding within the Commission is, and we have discussed this among ourselves, so let me clarify that for you. The understanding is that if you, if, if you see the legal case of the, uh, of the appellant or the person or, or the complainant is strong, is strong and then the, and the, the response got from the, you see what we do is, we issue an appeal notice or a complaint Quite notice. Right. If or you think the legal case is strong, if you admit it. If you think uh, it's not, you dismiss it. No, 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 please let me finish. Let me finish, my dear boy. If we think his legal case is strong, and it's only, only on legal grounds, and on the wrong grounds, the, 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 the information has been denied. I'll give you an example. Okay. A person, uh, no, no, let me give you an example. Like we have been discussing on the question of file notings. File notings, a person says, I want to see the, I've been asked, to, I've been wanting to see these file notings, but the authority has said no file notings. The authority in its response, written response, says file notings under such, uh, we, under such circumstances are not to be given. We simply rule in that, that please show the file notings. We can also rule that those file notings Meetings which transgress section 8 need not be shown. Quite right, but I'm talking of a different thing. I'm talking of you're not accepting an appeal. I'm talking of where you've dispensed and dismissed an appeal. Let me point out, at that same public hearing you referred to on the 24th of September, former Chief Election Commissioner T.S. Krishnamurti right. publicly stood up and said that having heard the complaints against your commission and the way your information commissioners are functioning, he thought you and your colleagues needed to take training from retired judges on how to handle appeals. That was a stinging rebuke. Well, that may have been his opinion, but we have legal opinion. We have a legal officer working with us. So Can you admit to one thing? That perhaps in your desire to handle matters efficiently and quickly, you've made some lapses and you've made some well, errors? Well, that's, alway that's always the case. There's you accept that? No, there is always a possibility, and that is why we ask for review. We normally, in fact, two of the people who... How often do you think that in your need to be swift, you may have erred and be miscarried ah. justice. Now, I can't give you a number or but a percentage. But it's happened often enough. It has happened sometimes. And now this worryingly is and more times than need. No, not worryingly. And what we do is we review this matter when we meet every Tuesday as a full commission. So off, you have to institute a mechanism of reviewing your own judgments to make sure that your own errors get detected well, and corrected. Re re review is a, legal, is a legal process. Can I point if out If a person is dissatisfied with the decision given, then he can ask for a review. And many people are asking me for reviews. Can I point out something? People say that, in fact, one of the great powers you have is to impose penalties. In 59 cases, you've given show cause notices to ask why penalties shouldn't be imposed. In only two cases were penalties imposed. In one of them, it's since been reviewed and revoked. And the second case is now under review as well. People want to know, why are you so reluctant to impose penalties? My dear Karan, I think you should go beyond simply the, the, the information given to you by Mr. Arvind Kejriwal for this purpose. No, this information, the information was from the Times of no, India, Manoj Mitta. Which is also given to them by Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. But it's Kejriwal. in the public domain. It's in the public domain, but I will, I'm not suggesting that please don't, uh, don't address it. But please extend your researches somewhat further. Have you taken account but you're of not last week? Question. You're last quarreling week, with the last source of information. The you're no, not I'm my I am answering it. I'm com I've come to answering it. I'm talking about the source. Now I'm coming to answer. The, the, have, have you taken into account last week? Now this 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 figure was cited uh, on a Friday on a Friday uh, on a Friday uh, in a Friday issue of the Times of India. The point is that a week before that. Just a week before that, if you're researching, please research. Just a week before that, the two, uh, the two impositions of penalty that I did, the imposition of penalty in the so four the disciplinary actions... So the figures four from two. It's but doubled, I grant it, but well, it's still the two, the two that have, no, 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 they have not been withdrawn at all. These are the two penalties which have been imposed. And the person concerned, they concern the Land Acquisition Office of Delhi Authority. And the other case... Do you know why people complain? Please, please, let me finish. The, 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 the cases of disciplinary action taken, three cases of disciplinary action taken, under the penalties clause, there are, two, say, there are two options. There is either the option of imposing a financial penalty, there's also the option of taking disciplinary action. We've taken disciplinary action in several cases, three cases, in fact. Can I interrupt and put a point to you? Because the reason I brought this up is once again NGOs, and not just Parivartan, I should add, but a whole range of them. It would be invidious to name them, but a whole range, including some who are very close personal friends of yours, say, that the Information Commission errs on the side of generosity and needless and unwarranted understanding of bureaucrats. Now, if and they say, it, if you put that it that way, if, if, if you put it that way, you accept I, it. I would have, say, I have accepted it. 
I, I, I have been gentle in that manner. I suppose I'm a gentle sort of person. But the point but is... Do you think you should be tougher in the future? No, well, let me, let me put it to you this way. This has all been a learning process for the Commission, for government, for the citizenry. It's all been a learn, learning process. Let me then lay out the, 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 the ground map which I have seen for myself, which will answer your question. I don't wish that this should sort of develop into a kind of confrontation between one section of society and another section of society. This act, the, the beauty of this act is that it is not the act of the commission, it is not the act of government, it is not the act of the public, it is everybody's okay. act. And you will have seen that, you will have seen that in the reflection of that debate which you are talking about. But you about. said a very important thing and I'm going to end on that note, you're saying this is the learning curve, we're learning our job as we do it, give us time, don't Correct. judge us by the first year, give us a bit more time to prove that we will stand by and we whip up, we will uphold the rights of the Indian people. The, the effects will start being felt uh, over a period of time. That is correct. Don't jump to conclusions. Okay. Bajat Habibullah, a pleasure talking to you on Devil's Advocate. But thank